We had a seven foot deep sandblasting pit to pour. No way to get a concrete truck or pump to it. So I had to invent my own solution. I built a custom ramp to slide two yards of concrete right where we needed it. Here's how it all went down. All right, guys, I'm back at the metal shop again, and we're in the back of the building right now. We're gonna be doing a seven foot hole right where X marks the spot, seven by seven by seven. And I'm gonna uh, form the wall, snap ties, and then we'll do a concrete floor. What it's gonna be for is um, to catch the sand because for the sand blast hit. So it's gonna be a place where the sand will go in and recirculate. And we have Doug here. He's gonna be doing the demo and I'm gonna use my little mini my mini skid to kind of move the dirt as he piles it up. All right, let me get set up here now. Hi, David O'Dell here with O'Dell Complete Concrete. We have Doug here. So when he had those sticks, it was kind of interesting. I've seen that on, on TV. You know, people using those to find things under underground. And uh, he was telling me he uses it for everything. If he wants to drill a well or find out where he's gonna drill, he uses that and that's where he drills for wells whatever it might be and it, it's always worked for them so some people can use those really well i know it's a craft and takes some experience to do it but he's got it down he's going to be doing my excavation he has a backhoe he's got a nice modification on it he's got a four foot wide bucket which is going to scoop this out really quickly as long as we don't hit any major boulders or something super hard should scoop it out pretty quick so you can see how fast this dirt's coming out with that big bucket imagine how long that would have taken me to dig with my little mini skid steer i would have had to dug a ramp out to access the hole to begin with a lot of time and effort with that one but this got it out i think he was here for about an hour maybe two hours and he was down seven foot deep, over X a couple feet all the way around it to give me some room to work on the forms because I'm going to do a poured in place walls on this. So I need a little space to get my whalers and snap ties and the wedges for the uh, snap ties I needed all the space to get all those on there. Didn't really give me enough space. I mean, it was tight. If I was about 30 pounds lighter, it would have been a great over X, but as it sits, I was probably about a foot, a foot shy of really being comfortable. I've got my laser level set up. Basically, I'm using the sidewalk as my, my benchmark. I want to be basically seven feet below that. So that's where I set my laser level at. Now, we did have a forecast of a lot of rain coming. We never got it, but, you know, just to be on the safe side, I had them build a berm all the way around the perimeter in case we did get some rain or some monsoon uh, type action going. I wouldn't have water running into the pit, eroding my walls, and then I would have had to redig. So that's what I'm doing now with the mini skid, just kind of building the berm up. So I had him dig a ramp as well. You can see that, and that's my walk-in point to get down in there. I could have thrown a ladder in there, but I really like ramps better. He also kind of 45, or maybe it's a 20 degree, kind of raked the edges at about a 20 degree angle up on the top four feet, just to kind of give it a little um, less chance of cave-ins. But this ground was really well compacted. It was. A lot more compact than I anticipated. The walls held up really well. There was no erosion, no collapses whatsoever. You can see it's pretty windy. Probably about 20 mile an hour winds right there. Here's setup time. So basically what I'm doing here is I've got my string lines up. I went parallel off the building, squared up the line. Now I'm plumbing down off of the string line above that we put in plumbing that to form the bottom. So if I form the bottom perfectly in the right place and square to where the pit's gonna go, I won't have to uh, plumb down ever again. 
I can work off of the bottom slab because the way we're doing it is we're going to pour the bottom slab first. We're going to have all of our rebar tied in there and all the verticals around the perimeter. And then we're going to start forming up off of that slab. Now we're going to use all half inch rebar. We're going to do six inch walls. Went down to Lowe's and picked up some five eighths. Might even be half inch plywood. Definitely not three quarters or one inch. I would prefer a three quarter inch to do these walls, but for the price difference, I made it work with half inch plywood and you'll get to see that too. See, if I had three quarter or one inch, I probably could have put my whalers at 24 inches. But since, you know, I got half inch for half the price, I ended up going 16 inch on my whalers. And that seemed to work. You'll get to see that through this series. The whole package, building, pouring, placing, stripping, and backfilling. So getting the concrete into this hole was another um, challenge. We came and get the concrete truck in here to drop a chute in there. I have to use my tractor, my modified bucket on my little mini skid to haul the concrete back here, but it doesn't reach out far enough to dump it into the hole because I have the battered dirt banks. So here I am here building a ramp to slide the concrete down into the hole from above. And I'm using the Milwaukee this is the cordless nail driver. And right now I have, I've got number eight duplexes on this because I do want to be able to pull them out later and then reuse this wood. I mean, it looks like it's been used a lot already, but it's still got some more life in it, I think, just for this kind of stuff. Definitely not going to build a coffee table or anything like that or out of it, but for little odds and ends like this, it's good to have some scrap lumber laying around. So initially, uh, we were just, I was just going to run it down the plywood. Then uh, my metal shop guy said, hey, why don't you lay some plastic on there? It's going to slide down real easy that way. Well, OK, I'll give it a try. I had some plastic, stapled it on there. You'll get to see how it works real quickly here. I made this width of this ramp just six inches bigger than my bucket. That way I wouldn't lose any material. See what happens with the plastic? There's too much friction and it just pulled it right down. I think I could have anchored that plastic better if I would have folded it around the end, put a two by four against the plastic and nailed that. It may have held then. Not positive though. That was six mil though. Might have taken like a 10 mil. So this is working out pretty good, just like this. This is, I think, two yards down here because we're eight inches deep at the bottom. Didn't really need a footing because we're deep all the way through. Oh, okay. And this is a 3000 PSI, they call it their standard. And that means, um, for them, it means 3000 PSI, big rock, one inch minus. Getting the ramp out, I already had pre-thought this whole thing, and I have a hole drilled into the end of the two by four that holds this ramp together. And I have a chain bolted onto it so I can drag it out of the hole. See, there's the hole in the chain rig rigging. It's pretty heavy, especially when you have the weight of that concrete moisture on it. So this made it come out really easy. We have Doug, Joey, and Joe down in the hole. Concrete truck driver was so impressed he had to come back and check it out. Here's a little vibrating action going on here. And that helped move the concrete around. We had a nice pile in the middle. We just sunk the vibrator in the middle and it really pushed the concrete out about an extra foot before we had to shovel it. And look at that, we even have Jade on the job. This is their second time coming back into the fold and running some camera action, little dirt work, whatever, whatever needs to be done. Oh, well, here's the easy way to float this stuff without having to go down in the hole. Just put some poles on the funny float and go for it. 
And by the way, during this load, we also poured a big sector in the front of this building. So at this point, we've already laid down the front. We started in the back, went to the front. This just sat down here all by itself while we laid uh, the balance, the eight yards down in the front, we came back around. But here's some excess concrete. Joey's gonna kind of smooth that out for our um, walkway, our pathway coming down the hill. And it's no biggie because I'm just gonna cover it in dirt when I backfill anyway. We're doing a nice hard trowel finish in here. I even have them finish the edges and around the bars because if, when I lay my plate down that I'm gonna um, use tap cons to screw into the floor for the outside of the form. I want it to set nice and flat. So I'm using a 516 tap cons and that'll just be down at the bottom outside of plywood. Then I'm gonna come up one foot for my first set of whaler then every 16 after that. Also at the very top, I'll have one board right at the top of plywood. That way I can go across with some spreaders or, or I can walk, lay ramps and stuff on it to get over the ditch to pour the concrete. But it's a nice project. A lot going on in this little, little unit. I mean, you could have done it with block, but concrete's always better. Anyway, thanks for watching. Make sure you stay tuned for part two because that's going to be setting this up making it hold concrete and it's going to be interesting to see if it does hold bye